Hi, welcome to Pat's Praise. I'm Pat Skinner, your host, and I want to invite you in for a, a different kind of evening tonight. Um, we're going to have some music. We've got some friends here that you've seen before, and I know she's going to bless your heart with her songs. But I'm also going to help them uh, tell, let them tell you about the books that they've written, and they are on a tour, and we'll tell you about that shortly. So sit back and enjoy Fresh the Heart of Triumph, author's tour, and music. And we have Dr. Naima Johnson here, Bush, and Dr. Heather Burton, and Felicia Beck. And uh, there'll be more information at the end of the program in the credits. So if you uh, want to get a hold of these ladies, it'll be there. Back to me, back to me, back to me. Just 
just come back to me, back to me, back to me. Yes. I am waiting with this blood that covers every sin. I am waiting, won't you let me in? I am waiting, can't you hear me? girls on here and introduce their tour which is called Expressions of Triumph Authors Tour. So if you're watching for it on Facebook and Reverb Nation or whatever and um, I would like to at this time introduce you to a friend of ours because she's been on here before, Dr. Naima Bush and her book she's going to talk about is Confessions of a Big Girl and we have Dr. Heather Burton and her book is Crimson Heights, and we'll be talking about both books and letting them read an excerpt of their book, and then we'll have Naima come back and do a song. Okay, first we're going to talk to um, Dr. Heather Burton about her book, um, Crimson Heights. Um, how did Crimson Heights evolve? Um, Crimson Heights actually evolved out, a, out of a joke. Um, I had four friends that um, I used to hang out with, and every Friday night we would go to dinner, and they asked me to write a book about them. So oh, that's wow. actually how Crimson Heights evolved. Oh wow, so it's about your friends. <laughs> Did, you change yeah, the name? Did you change the names to protect the I children? changed, well actually my friends came up with their character synopsis of who they wanted to be in the book. So it started with like that, but then I kind of tweaked and changed some things. But they actually developed who they wanted to be in the book. Wow. What is the message of Crimson Heights? Um, Crimson Heights was written in the hopes of impacting women in their decision making process um, from a moral and spiritual perspective okay. when it comes to relationships. Oh, very good. Okay, let's see what else we got here for you. Um, you mentioned the Crimson Experience. What is the Crimson Experience? The Crimson Experience is actually an umbrella effect. Um, the Crimson Experience, it deals with um, the whole picture of Crimson Heights. And the book Crimson Heights revolves around a performing arts center. Um, but under the Crimson Experience, you have Crimson Heights um, Ministries, which is a nonprofit 501c3 that focuses on the holistic development of women from a spiritual perspective, looking at the economical, physical, mental, and emotional health of women. And then you have Crimson Heights Services and Products, which are the books, myself, um, conducting workshops, speaking engagements, wow. and that sort of thing. Okay. So, and that's actually the name of the website, which is www.thecrimsonexperience.com. So if somebody would like to get a hold of your book, how would they go about doing that? They can actually purchase it from the Crimson Experience website. Again, that's www.thecrimsonexperience.com. And there's a link to um, publish, to purchase the book. So you can click there and actually purchase the book. Awesome. Well, I'm going to step aside and let you read an excerpt from this book. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, too. Oh, you're so Appreciate welcome. It. This is new for me, too. <laughs> Alexis might be the baby of the bunch, but she's Kennedy's spiritual inspiration. She lives, breathes, and will die a church girl. But she grew up that way also. Not that that is a reason, because many grow up in the church but go astray. She was one of those girls whose mama said, if you live in my house, then you're going to church. Her mother also made it a point to tell her that her husband had to be a God-fearing man. And sure enough, Ray was. When Lexi first started dating Ray, everyone was amazed that the first question she asked him was, are you saved? Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal savior? When Lexi would repeat this story to Kennedy, she was always amazed that Lexi had, to, had the guts to ask the number one question about religion on the first date. Lexi always said, Kennedy, if you can't ask a man about his soul, then you're really not interested in knowing him. Lexi was real knowledgeable when it came to the Bible, and she always kept everyone especially Kennedy on track, whenever she would listen. Asking Ray about his salvation showed what was important in a relationship to Lexi. And it wasn't money, it wasn't sex, but the God her man serves. Kennedy only hoped 
that she could get to the point without the fear of running a man away with a religious conversation. Of course, a good friend is one that can help you grow spiritually. And Kennedy prayed that Lexi's spiritual influence would continue to lead her in a positive direction. Although Kennedy wasn't as spiritually grounded as Lexi, she longed and prayed for the day when God blessed her with a husband who would ask her to go to church instead of begging him. She wanted her man to ask, babe, you getting ready for church? Instead of hearing the all familiar conversation, no, nah, the game's on, I can't go to church. Take the game and watch it after church. No, nah, I need to be right there when it starts. Kennedy believed if a man does not have a spiritual foundation, there is no telling what he would do. Most women are able to commit to most men, but men need something or someone to answer to, meaning that a man needs to be held responsible or accountable. He is filled with swift transition. Not on earth unmoved can stand Build your hopes on things Build your hopes on things eternal And hold to God's unchanging hand You better trust in Him who will not leave you Whatsoever years may bring If by earthly friends you are If you are forsaken Then still more closely to him You gotta hold to his hand To God's unchanging hand you got a hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. You gotta, you gotta, gotta build, gotta build, build your hopes on things, things that are eternal, and hold to God's unchanging hand. Because when your journey is completed if to God you have been true
Don't give up. You gotta hold on. Don't let go. Naima, if somebody would like to have your book, how would they go about getting it? Well, you can buy the book directly from my website, www.naima, N-A-I-M-A, Johnston, J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N.com. That website is soon to be changing, but right now that is the address. Or you can get it off of Amazon, www.amazon.com. Very good. So I'm going to step aside and let you tell us about your book. All right, thank you. I have to tell the story because I don't want to hamper someone else's deliverance, let alone my own. Commanded to tell the truth of this sordid life that my wonderful Jesus insists on using despite my past, why me? Maybe it was my commitment to sitting through mass in Latin, English, and Spanish on Sunday mornings as a child. Maybe it was the experience at a church in Brooklyn when at 14 I broke down, cried, and confessed at the altar. Maybe it was the draw of gospel music on my mother and my great grandmother's prayers. Maybe I got tired of waking up with one whose love was conditional. As long as I was fat, that was okay. Curious, isn't it usually the other way around? But maybe it was just the truth of who Christ is, that he knew me when he laid the foundation of the earth, knitted me together in my mother's womb, what manner of love is this, that despite the dirtiness of my soul, his love never changed? I have strived to achieve the ability to surrender to God of the universe in all my femininity, in all my shortcomings, and all my brokenness, to make him truly everything. This is the story of brokenness, of finding love of self because the Lord commanded it to be so. The devil is alive and well, pestering me with the fears and the lies determined to obstruct my path, but I am committed to obeying my Father. The lies of the world can't change the truth of Christ. The devil, the world, and the ones that I have loved have told me that fat, black, and female were not good enough. Many would tell me that Jesus is not the truth, but lack of belief does not make a thing less true. Yet God selected this project chick to dismiss the lies of the devil and to share the truth of his love. So I write to tell the story of growing up fat, black, and female at the turn of the century. I write to tell on myself before someone else does. And in sharing the truth of who I am, I share the truth of who God is. In this truth, his truth, I find salvation. My hope and prayer is that you do as well.
still with me in this place. Where is the one who crafted a man by his hands? Where is the one whose ways I can't understand? Where is the one who defends with a knot of his head? Where is the one? Oh, where is the one? Where are you? of Triumph Tour, authors that are just wonderful products of our company, products of their own works, but most of all, products of what the Lord has to offer into a society that needs to hear Jesus outside of the traditional pulpit. So we're excited to be here today and excited to be with you, and we thank the listening audience and the TV audience for embracing the various services that Acts, manages, Acts Management produces. I had uh, checked your um, 
help me out before on the, on the internet, and I thought it was just uh, music, but you have so much more to offer, so I was really pleased that, uh, to get to meet you and to find out a little bit more about the company firsthand. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to step aside now, and we're going to bring Naima back on for another song, and God bless you, and thank you so much. You remember to have the tide rolling, and in due time you roll it out again. You remember to give every day the bread, and every sparrow by your hand is fed. You remember to wipe the tears, shield the pain, call the angels on my name. Save the lost. Now I can say. 